morning and welcome back to World Talks with me, Sadia Strzemska. Central Europe braces for days of potentially catastrophic rainfall. Emptying reservoirs and preparing sandbags is underway in Austria, the Czech Republic and Poland. The region has already experienced a catastrophic flood almost 20 years ago, in 1997. Then the so-called Central European flood took the lives of 114 people and caused material damages estimated at $4.5 billion. Concerns run high, yet politicians assure there is no reason to panic. To discuss, I am joined by Tomasz Okruszko, professor at the Warsaw University of Life Sciences. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Before we start our discussion, let's go live to our correspondent in Prague, Marek Steele, who is, who is on the ground. Good morning, Marek. Could you please tell us what's happening in Prague as of now? Good morning, Sally. Well, the situation is the worst in the northeast, the north and the south of the country, actually there uh, where the terrain is the most mountainous. So there's been at least 27 flood alerts, especially in those regions and around the city of Brno as well. Here in Prague, the situation is still uh, quite OK, but authorities are bracing for this uh, possible flood, as you said. Uh, I saw b barriers being erected uh, near the old town and uh, in the north of the city just not far from where we're standing. What you can see behind me, there's the water levels are still uh, acceptable, but uh, the situation is very much dire in other parts of the country. More than 60,000 households are already without electricity, and that's not only due to rain, but also a uh, strong wind that's uh, uh, coming across the country. Also, an election campaign that is currently taking place uh, in the Czech Republic. Many politicians are suspending their campaigns because of the very uh, bad uh, weather. Back to you, Sally. Thank you, Marek. Much appreciated. So now let's go back to our discussion. So, Professor, could you please tell us from a scientific standpoint, what leads to these floods and can they be predicted? Uh, can they be avoided? Uh, yes, we, we have a uh, um, safe ground of saying how the situation is developing with the very wet, warm, uh, wet uh, uh, air coming from Genuan uh, Bay towards our part of Europe. So uh, it is very uh, important to observe the situation in Czech Republic, uh, earlier in Slovenia and Austria, as this is the same weather condition which moves uh, north to, the, to to Poland. So seeing what is happening in Czech Republic, we might better uh, uh, predict what will come to Poland. I think it's important to see the, our friends in Czech. Uh, you mentioned the flood in 97. They were facing a very severe flood, including Prague in 2002, and a number of measures, including this uh, uh, gates, which we are uh, observing now on the screen, has been established, and Czech is, is well prepared, to my best knowledge, uh, to cope with the flood. And what about Poland? Yeah, I, I think the most important, look, especially taking into account what we have uh, been facing in 1997, is that we have uh, significantly improved the forecast system. Uh, to my best knowledge, uh, at the moment, the forecast and the reality of the rain is more or less on the, on, on the same level, so, so the, there is nothing worse than forecasted. Uh, and also the forecast gives us the leading time to prepare so, so we are talking about this potential flood already three days. It means both citizens uh, and the uh, services might prepared uh, for, for flood, which is one of the most important issues when we are facing the, the high water that, that we, we, we got prepared uh, in, the, in the meantime. How uh, much of the, the, the water will come, we'll see. At the moment, just before our uh, uh, meeting, I, I checked the Polish weather service, and indeed, last 24 hours, we had the rainfall in uh, Sudeten mountains above 100 millimeters of rainfall during the last 24 hours. It's a lot. So we, we say that if we got more than 50 millimeters per uh, 24 hours, it might cause a, a, a problem, 100 severe problem. Uh, all small tributaries to Odra are uh, above the warning levels. So it means that uh, the forecast saying we should be prepared uh, are uh, good placed. 
Uh, Professor, tell me, um, and what would the strategy to prevent the flood from, uh, from affecting people's lives too severely, what would it involve? Um, what is the strategy? Are we protecting we, major we cities? To, that, yeah. uh, remember that, that we have uh, two uh, measures. So one is about the planning, and that's it's too late, yeah, we, for, 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 for making some uh, additional measures uh, before. Uh, but uh, uh, on immediate actions, uh, there is what already was mentioned during your relation. So we empty the reservoirs to have the capacity to cope with the with the high water. We prepared the uh, uh, increase of of damming system to 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 secure it. And the worst case, what already has happened, we evacuate people from the uh, places which we are afraid to be flooded in Guhawazi part of the citizens uh, has been uh, uh, replaced to the safe place in the in the school so uh, we, we should be patient he, uh, hearing what the the servicemen are uh, saying to us uh, and uh, we, with this patience uh, i think we can cope with the flood because we we, we have the information how it develops Right, so let's uh, take a quick uh, listen to what Polish politicians had to say about this uh, situation. They're, of course, trying to reassure the public. So we have sound bites from Donald Tusk, I believe, and other officials. The forecast is not overly alarming. We, of course, are not ignoring any signals. We have our experience with the Wrocław flood from 1997. I also remember 2010 and the flooding then. So of course we cannot ignore this threat. Still, I want to say that today there is no reason to predict threats of a scale threatening the entire country. What can be expected, and this is what we want to be prepared for, is local flooding or so-called flash floods, located particularly in mountainous areas, although this happens in cities as well. We expect more meetings, more announcements from the Interior Ministry and video calls with regional officials. The regional officials have been told that this is currently the most important matter, the priority, and all other matters for those two or three days are less important. We hope that these called upon resources will be enough. If not, we will centrally redeploy resources from other regions, the firefighters, the military, so that in the threatened areas every citizen could feel safe. Each citizen could have contact with the representatives of state services. So, as we've just heard, Poland's Prime Minister mentioned these flash floods or local flooding. Professor, could you please explain how does this come about? Because it's different, right, from, from a major flood that, that goes regionally. Yeah, the, yeah so the, the flash flood uh, is occurring when we have a heavy rain in the local uh, catchment especially the ones which are either mountainous or the city where impermeable layer is governing the, the uh, uh, water flow. The flash flood has two meanings. First, that it appears very rapidly in, in terms of hours, in certain uh, uh, conditions also in a, in, in a minute. But flash flood means also that it disappears relatively fast. So this calling for patience means also don't panic. It is not forever. It is for hours. We, we, we have to secure our place, our car, our belongings sometimes for, for a certain uh, period. Uh, and again, we, the, the most important is the forecast, first meteorological forecast, then hydrological one, and be prepared. It's difficult to be over-prepared. I, I, I think what Poland learned from the flood 97 is that we are not uh, surprised by the event, as it was case 20 years ago. Uh, so with, with this and also that uh, so far, uh, none of the fo uh, of the rainfall, neither flow, is bigger than the forecasted. I think we are not we are in alarm situation, but we are far from saying that it's uh, something uh, extremely special or which can bring a, a very big harm. So far, I would say so good. Uh, but Professor, we've just learned that the region that is most exposed to, to this potential flooding is uh, Lower Silesia. And my question is, why this area in particular? What makes it prone to flooding? Yeah, I, I think that we, we, we can get our experience for those who go to Sudeti Mountains. They are not very high, but 
already in the on on 1000 meters you experience the Alp, uh, the the landscape as in alps yeah? so so the meteorological condition to those relatively low mountains uh, low uh, lower mountains are severe enough it means the the uh, meteorological condition change very rapidly it means also that the uh, amount of moisture which comes with there relatively fast turns to to be to be the uh, uh, flow into the river so this special atmospheric condition which we enjoy walking brings a, a threat uh, when it comes to the to the uh, uh, naval um, uh, rainfall and flooding uh, followed that uh, event Everyone is speaking about lessons learned from the 1997 um, flood, but I wanted to ask you, Professor, about infrastructure. Were certain projects introduced that are beneficial and could be useful right now? And is there something that still needs to be done? Yeah, I, I think it is interesting. Maybe it's not the best word in this situation, but uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, structural uh, improvement in Wrocław itself and in the surrounding, uh, including the dry water uh, reservoir, uh, which should be in operational uh, during this uh, flood. We have a bypass channels uh, in the Wrocław uh, itself. Uh, so uh, I think we are also better prepared in terms of the infrastructure, not only about the warning system. How it works, that's the time to check it. Uh, Professor, I know that the next few days will be uh, crucial, but for how long shall we remain on alert? How long will this spread? Uh, all forecast says about 48 hours for the mountain regions. But we have to remember that everything which comes in the uh, Sudeti area will go to Odra, and then we will have uh, a number of days when we have to get a close look on Odra downstream Wrocław as it was also case in 97, uh, but we have uh, longer uh, lead time. What is new, I would say, in the forecast is also that these heavy rains are moving more to the east, so also the western part of Małopolska uh, might be affected by, by the rain, maybe not so heavy as in Sudety, but the, there will be a larger uh, impact in the south, and of course in following days on the bigger rivers, uh, which which are fed by the streams coming from uh, mountains. Uh, Professor, my last question uh, for those who are in the in the areas uh, threatened by by this flood: What can they do? Any last minute preparations? Perhaps uh, they they could do something to protect themselves better. Yeah, the, the most important is a worldwide message for uh, pr flood prone areas. Uh, is to get information on time so that, that we know what, what is going to happen in, in, in coming uh, hours. And second, to obey the servicemen. Uh, as they have more information, at uh, sometimes staying too long in the place which we think we should protect by ourselves uh, might be danger for, for, for health, for, for life. So uh, life is more important than the goods. Uh, and it's not only for Poland, but uh, worldwide. And if service say you should leave this place for a few hours, don't o o we should obey this and don't obstacle the, the action. There are two most important, be informed and be in touch with the servicemen. Absolutely. Tomasz Ogruszko, Warsaw University of Life Sciences. Thank you, Professor, for being with us this morning. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching World Talks. Please leave in for more here on TVP World.